This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's fight week with Jacobs Ryder. Delighted to be joined, as always, by Miss Ebony Bridges. All right, mate, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, just here supporting, you know, the teammates. So it's good. I'm excited. You uh, mocked my Australian accent earlier, which I was... <laughs> what? It was not even an Australian accent. It was, like, so woeful. You should try, try it again. You should try it again. Good day, Ebony. <laughs> Ebony. You can't say Ebony and expect it to be an Australian accent. It's Ebony. You can't do that Ew. on the end. Good day, Ebony. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Yeah. You New Zealanders are all the same. Fuck off, oh. you cunt. <laughs> oh. Okay, strong start to the interview. Um, you're here, obviously, you said you're supporting kind of uh, your stable yes. friends now. F mates, stable friends, yeah. mates. So we've not really spoken about this before. I know you've addressed it, uh, but you felt like the switch to Mark Tibbs um, and you having obviously the, the majority of your fights now in the UK, you thought that that was kind of the right fit for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I felt like, you know, I'm fighting here in the UK and I'm just getting tired of traveling from Australia to Philadelphia, adjusting, taking a week to you know, a week or more to adjust to that time zone and the, the long flight to then having to do it again just before my fight. Like, it's just too much adjusting, do you know what I mean? There's too much time wasted in the camp where I'm feeling like shit, you know? And I just thought, yeah, I'm fighting here all the time. All my sponsors are here, um, you know? And I think it's just better here just in general for, for my brand and, and for my training. You know, Mike Tibbs is great, great sparring here, you know? And, you know, there's so much good sparring around and the country's uh, not that big, so it's easy to kind of get the sparring. In America, the country's so big, so you've got to have some good training, sparring and good girls, but it's, you know, it's hard to get them. So, yeah, it's better. Better. Um, let's track back. Um, I want to kind of go back to kind of the first kind of lockdown period here in the UK. Uh, I don't even know when that was. It was maybe 18 months ago, yeah. maybe a bit longer. Um, but just looking at your profile then, and you were like, I remember our first interview we did on Zoom, and you were talking how you're kind of talking now, but you were kind of saying everything you were going to do, yeah. and et cetera, and uh, you were making noise on social media, et cetera. But now it's like uh, a fully different game because you've actually done everything yeah. that you've got. Well, not everything, but yeah. you've done a lot of the stuff that you said you were going to do. And you've turned yourself into a little bit of a household name, especially here in the UK, where everyone kind of knows who you are. But for you, that's kind of the marketing business side of your uh, career as well that you had to focus on in order to get yourself in contention to put yourself where you are. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, if you want to, I always knew like from the start, if you want to, you want to get paid, you know, you want to make money, you want to get opportunities, you need to be known. How are you going to get any opportunities? if you, no one even knows who you are. How are you gonna get money if you don't have support and fans and you don't have a name? And I also think about it as more of a post-boxing. I know I'm a bit older and I know I don't have 10 years in boxing, but I wanna be able to have a brand that can continue to make me money in business after boxing, do you know what I mean? And I mean, you can go out and box and can get paid for your fights and you know, not have such a big name and then when you finish boxing, what do you do, become a coach or you know, you're just going back into normality. But if you're able to build a brand, you know, and, and build that name, then you're going to always make money off that name, no matter if you're fighting or whatever. And that's kind of, yeah, you know, obviously, I'm trying to think of the long term as well. Everyone's always had their opinion about you, whether it's positive or, or negative, and your attitude is the same. You either watch it or don't watch it. Yeah. Simple as that, right? Fuck. right yeah, okay. no fucks given. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a line, though? Is there a line that you kind of have in your head and you think to yourself, you'll market yourself how you believe and see fit to your audience as well and your your kind of fan base and obviously for the good of the sport. But there's a line there that you don't cross. Is that in your head or is it just a case of you do you and, like I said, it just sort of comes naturally and there isn't kind of a line that I thought, oh, you know, I'm, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that or I wouldn't overstep the mark in that way. Um, not really. I mean, um, I just do everything kind of naturally and I just be myself and, and I think I would naturally, you know, I don't know what lines, you know, really I'm thinking about, but like, I mean, if you're a good person and you've got good values and good morals, I suppose, like, you know, you automatically have those kind of invisible lines that, you know, I don't know what you're thinking about, but do you know what I mean? But um, 
I suppose, like, I, I'm honestly just always just being me. And I'm not really thinking, oh, this is going to sell more or this is going to be, people going to like me more. Like, I, that's too hard to, you know, to maintain. I just got to keep being myself and keep pushing my message and, and all that kind of thing. I think, like, uh, maybe a question in that sense would be the whole, um, the whole, what's it called, topic to, like, OnlyFans, for example, right? I mean, I know I could go on OnlyFans and I couldn't fucking make so much money. I could probably make more money than boxing. Probably didn't have to box again. You know what I mean? And it's easy work. But... At the same time, it's not that that's a line that I want to cross because I could totally do it and I, I wish I would. But the only problem I'm not is not because of my boxing fans because I don't give a fuck. That's all going to help me. It's because of the teaching. Do you know what I mean? And and just being able to have that as an option. I just feel like if I was to go down that kind of cross that line, then the, unfortunately the stigma of that could jeopardise me in schools and, and teaching and doing what I love and the passion there. But that's got nothing to do really with actual boxing because if I wasn't a teacher and I wasn't interested in being a teacher or being in the education department or being in schools and things like that and then I wouldn't give a fuck two fucks at all like, or anything so I just like if I could have making money just you're jealous that you can't make it you know what I mean but unfortunately there is that and I don't know there might get a point guys listen might get a point where I'll be you know obviously too maybe too famous or whatever to ever teach and stuff and I go well you know what well, I'm not gonna teach again so yeah here here's some bikini photos for uh thirty dollars a month or whatever the fuck it is but no honestly like at the moment it's it's that's probably the only kind of if you want to call it a lot of line of crossing if you're even thinking about that that maybe um I purposely don't cross um just because of yeah my teaching desires do you think that you've encouraged other females to adapt and I'm going to be careful how I word this to adapt an attitude to be themselves as well oh 100% 100% you know I was actually sparring Stevie Levy the other day you know she stayed, she stayed over complete like, lunatic complete yeah. lunatic but um she said to me, she goes, you know, Ebony, I don't think you realise, you know, the effect that you have, obviously, on people. And even myself, she goes, you gave me so much confidence. She goes, before you, like, I would never have even thought to wear red lipstick, you know, because she goes, but I would like to wear it. And it's something, she's still saying something about how it was um, something to do with her mum or something and just red lipstick and proud and, and her, whatever. I, anyways, but I, um, yeah, but she said to me, you know, like, I would never have done that, you know, because it's not the look that you go for in boxing, like, and it's not what's been in the past where girls do themselves up and want to be pretty and, you know, be scared to do it, that people are going to judge me because I'm wearing bright, loud, red, red lipstick, you know what I mean? And, like, other, there's a lot of other boxers that have come to me and said said things that I'm making them feel more confident to just be themselves and do what they want to do without being judged because it's like, why can't you wear makeup, you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, pe people judge it like you, like you shouldn't because you're an athlete or, or, or whatever. Like, you know, why would you go to the gym and put foundation or mascara on? Why fucking not? Do you know what I mean? Fucking make yourself look good, feel good, do it, you know? So, yeah, it's just... It, I I know I can see it and I can see it evolving. You know, you go back two years, you know, before me, that it wasn't people, girls weren't putting the effort in really, like, you know, not in boxing. Um, and I feel like it's a lot more accepted now and people are doing a lot more confident doing because they see me kind of go through it and get a heap of shit for it. But now I've got the respect, you know, and I think um, people just like, fuck it, I'll just do what I want and be me. And if I want to wear makeup mad, if I don't, then I don't. But who cares? You know, it's just that strong message of just being you. I know you don't care about this, uh, but do you understand why someone would be judgmental about you or the way you kind of market yourself, etc.? Do you understand why people would have a problem with that? Does that register to you? Of course, yeah, like I can see all sides of the stories, you know what I mean? But again, I just feel like the people that have that are very still closed-minded and are still very living in the past, that the people that think that it's bad for the sport or that it's whatever they say, what they say, that it's sex, sort of sexualising the sport or whatever. I just think that's so fucking 1920s, like telling women what they can do and, and saying that the way they dress is, is portraying a certain way. I just think that's so fucking old school mentality. You know what I mean? It's like blaming, like it's like saying if you get like attacked as a woman, it's your fault for wearing a skirt. No, it's fucking, it's not. It's your fault, like it's not our fault for wearing a skirt. You shouldn't be fucking attacking us. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's you know, like if you want to, if, 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 it's not my fault that, that it's get, getting sexualised. I'm not sexualising it. The people that are thinking are doing it and fuck good on them, whatever they want to do. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Please, I don't know. Whatever he's doing with fighters, I don't care as long as you're enjoying it, mate, because <laughs> I'm here I'm here for entertainment and I'm, I'm here to make people happy. You know what I mean? And, and just really keep, yeah, pushing that message. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's bad for the sport at all. At all. Like, look at how it's grown. You know what I mean? And it's going to continue to grow and we're going to get so many more different women in, in the sport and... I think it's open. I think personally, it's opened up more doors. I think the biggest question before people, well, I suppose really before the the Shannon Courtney fight, the biggest question that was asked about you 
is that despite your profile, um, it's a case of can you fight? Yeah. And that was always the biggest thing for you as well because you've always maintained, and even I remember speaking to you that fight week and you were saying, just, just tune in and watch and, and you tell me if I can fight. And I think everyone was kind of, not even pleasantly surprised, but they, you answered that aspect of their questions about, despite, again, your profile, I can fight. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. But you answered that question quite, say it was how long ago, a year ago, yeah. whenever it was. Um, but in your kind of introduction into the UK boxing market, uh, you answered that question very early on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, I have so much... Um, belief in myself and I know and that's why I never change and I don't listen to anyone because I know the graph that I put in I know the work that I put in I, I know how I fight I know my style um I might not be the most best polished fighter in the world and who really is no one you know no one's perfect but I'm telling you right now I can definitely fight and I definitely got the heart and um and I'm going to be entertaining no matter what it's a fan-friendly style do you know what I mean so I mean I, I knew all that I just needed people to see it and that's why I pushed so hard to to promote the fight because the more people that got to see me fight, not just my haters, not just my fans, but the more people in general, I knew that, that, that once they see me fight, that they would believe or that they become new fans of women's boxing because I just know what I have. I just know what I have, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and it all went perfectly to plan. Let's talk about March 26th um, in Leeds. I suppose if you were to pick a place to fight, uh, it would be Leeds. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. real, it would be Leeds. I mean, maybe Ellen Road, but the arena's amazing as well, you know, so I'm really, really excited for this. I honestly can't believe it. I was like, the chance of fighting back there so fast, like, um, I'm pumped. I'm so pumped. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen uh, a few people being uh, a little bit negative towards the fact that um, you're ha you've got basically within kind of eight fights. Um, is it eight? Is this is your eighth coming up, or it's is this your ninth? ninth? Coming up. Within nine fights, you've had two world title shots in that period, um, and obviously the first one didn't go your way. But I'm assuming you kind of read everything on social media and notice bits and bobs. Yeah. Have you seen that, and what's your response to that? Um, I haven't seen a lot of it to be honest, but I might have seen one or two. And I just think, well, you were all whinging that I had a title shot after five fights, you know, and whinging that me and Shannon didn't deserve the fight and this and that, and, you know, we shouldn't be fighting for a world title, but then we had one of the best fights in history. Do you know what I mean? It's just people, just haters, and people that say that and jealous, they're not getting it, or their fighters aren't getting it, or just something, you know what I mean? But um, it's it's purely comes from their own problems. Um, you know, and if I happen to get the fights before others, then fuck, congratulations to me. That's what I've done. That's why I've built built my profile. And unfortunately, this is business. You know what I mean? And and um, you know, I think I've worked hard. And and it was with Eddie from the start that he wanted to get me the title fight. You know, but after after that, because of me taking that fight on a short notice, it was always like, yeah, we want to get me a title fight, um, fight as soon as possible. You know, you got Ellie Scottney fighting for a title this weekend as well, you know, like an interim title or whatever. Um, she's a lot younger than me, obviously, but they're going to move fast. It's women's boxing. Clarissa Shields, 11 fights, fucking, what is it, nine times world champion? I don't even know. Like, I've lost count of her, you know what I mean? And and two two heavy, two times undisputed. This is women's boxing. When people are going to fucking realise we don't need to have 20, 30 fights to fight for world titles, you're going to be having it. I mean, Hannah Rankin's had, like, a couple of world title fights, and she's not had that many fights. Like, it's just... Anyone to try and get a negative on, oh, you're going to title fight. Yeah, well, fucking eat a dick. Like, you know what I mean? Suck shit. I'm fucking here and I'm living my dream and you're not. Let's answer that one. Yeah, I think anyone that knows, it's not even about women's boxing, but knowing because of the, the lesser depth of the amount of fighters there yeah. are, that you can be fast-tracked and you can get opportunities yeah. earlier than the men. I mean, that's a no-brainer. If you don't know that in boxing, then no. I don't know what you're watching. Yeah. No. Probably watching my wanes instead. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, Roman. Yes. Um, impressed from what you've seen of her? Yeah, of course. Yeah, very impressed. You know, I've I always liked watching Roman fight. Um, I when I seen her fight Melissa uh, Melissa Parker, I was like, fuck, I want to have that fight because it's a mad fight, toe to toe. She had some defeats earlier on in her thing, but she went up a weight class for that fight as well, and and it wasn't the belt on the, on the line because she went up a division and just did an eight rounder. Um, and I think it was like during lockdown or and she kind of got the late notice. I don't really know what it was all about, but yeah, I mean, but when I watched that fight, it was a very close fight and it was a very exciting fight. And I just watched it going, oh, I want to be in a fight like that. Like, I know that, that would be mad. So I think I've always like looked at Roman as an, 
not like I want to beat the champ or anything. I'm just like, I want to have that kind of fight. Like, that's the kind of fight I want to have. It excites me, you know what I mean? Um, and then I seen her recent fight. She didn't really fight like that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, she can do that too, you know what I mean? So I don't really know. Um, you know, I think she's very skilled. She's obviously the most experienced in the division at the moment. Um, she's been world champion for, you know, five years or more. Um, she's, yeah, this I think is going to be her eighth world title defence or attempted world title defence. So, yeah, I mean, she's, she's a challenge and I'm really excited about that. And... Um, I just want to try and put myself in the mix and, and um, you know, um, I f feel excited to fight a champion rather than for a vacant title or someone that's just newly become a champion against a bunch of other novices, do you know what I mean? For me to be fighting like a, a, a you know, a really, um, you know, um, solidified champion is, is really exciting for me and a South American as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pumped and, and hopefully, God willing, it goes my way and it's my time and, and I get that belt. I believe I have all the tools to get it. Um, you know, Tibbs is confident, everyone's confident. Um, that I have it, it's just I've got to bring it fucking A1 on the day, you know what I mean? Because um, I need nothing up to be 100% on that day. So um, that's just what I'm focusing on. Everything's focused on my fire. I've moved over here um, for my camp because it's all those little one percenters, you know, I don't be traveling around the world, every camp, you know, um, I've made a lot of sacrifices at home just so I can be here totally focused. You know, I'm not thinking of it. I didn't even book a flight at home because like, I don't want to think about after the fight. All I want to focus on is that before and leading up into that fight and then whatever happens after happens and um, then we go from there. Even though your fight with Shannon Cordy wasn't that long ago, do you believe that in that period up until March 26th that you're kind of in a much better place, just not just in your life but just in your career to be challenging for a world title? Yeah, well, definitely. Like, obviously, the world title against Shannon Courtney, like, I mean, I had f four weeks' notice, you know, and it wasn't even really – I didn't even really prepare for the world title. Like, it was just like, yeah, let's take this. It's a great opportunity. Let's have the fight. I want to fight in the UK. Um, I wasn't much pressure on me. I'm like, I don't really care. I just want to go in there and fight my fight. I think I can win it, you know what I mean? But it wasn't – it's not the same as it is now, you know. But that experience there plus, you know, the fights with Beck, the fights with Gangloff, all the fights that I've had and, and all that extra, you know, nearly a year of training – I'm only going to better. I've only been boxing five years and look how much I've improved. You know, like I've only been, you know, like I said, my first year of my pros, I was out. I had one fight and I was out the whole year. My second year was COVID. You know what I mean? So I'm boxing the way I'm boxing with like such little experience. Like, but imagine which I've had is a whole year of experience, you know, which has been a smooth year of experience and fights. Like I'm, I'm only getting better, you know, and God willing, knock on wood, there's no injuries in my camp and there's no injuries in my fight because then you get to see me in my, in, in you know, in my best shape, my best condition with, you know, now Tibbs and that in my corner, I'm, I'm really, really confident in this fight. Let's talk about this kind of um, situation. We saw um, Jamie Mitchell uh, the other night, very impressive yeah. against uh, Carly Skelly uh, out in, a, in America. Um, we know, obviously, she won the title from Shannon Courtney. So we don't know what Shannon Courtney's situation is prior because she's out injured. But where do you see the route back to fighting Shannon Cordy, which I'm assuming that you do want to do, regardless of you your world title fight on the 26th, but just that as a piece of your yeah. kind of career, I'm sure that you'd want to put that right. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not obviously focused on anything after my title fight, like any solidifying, but, you know, I can think about the Courtney fight, whatever. Like, obviously, I do want to have that fight. But if I win the belt and she don't have a belt, then she's fucking, what has she got to offer me, really? You know, and she said the same thing about me. But the thing is, is that I do want that fight, but I'm not going to go, hey, Shannon, I've got a belt, come, come, let's come fight a fight. She's going to have to fucking work for it. Go get your fucking belt, you know, or sit in there and stew and be desperate for money and come knocking on my fucking door for it, and then I'll give it to you. Do you know what I mean? And maybe, who knows, fucking hopefully not, but even if we don't have a belt, either of us have a belt, then we can still fight, and it's still going to be an epic fight, you know, with or without belts. It's going to be a great fight, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to just go, hey, i got a belt, let's go, Courtney, you know? No. So hopefully she wins the belt because then it will be great to be able to unify with her. That would be that would be a really great fight. But if not, happy to unify with any of them and, and keep, you know, building it up and maybe towards the end of my career go, hey, Courtney, you want to fight? When I was talking to Eddie uh, Hearn uh, a little while ago, when was it, a couple of weeks ago or whatever, um, I think he was obviously surprised about not how good Jamie Mitchell was, but I think Jamie Mitchell was almost brought in as the opponent, yeah. obviously for Shannon Courtney she was. But then what she's kind of done in that fight and then gone on with uh, Skelly, etc., uh, I think she's kind of proved her yeah. worth more than just that opponent yeah, tag. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Um, obviously, my manager manages Jamie as well, Brian Cohen. And um, so, you know, we knew that she had skills and, like, she, she, you know, she had, like, 
I think I have a pretty good pedigree in amateurs as well. Um, and you can really never count out anyone. She's hungry. She's, she's, you know, she's been through a lot in her life. And, um, you know, that also makes you be the way, you know, determined and train hard and push, you know, and, um, she's here trying to prove herself, trying to set up her future as well, you know, and she's good, man. She really impressed me as well. Like, you know, impressed me with Shannon, impressed me with, um, Skelly. You know, I don't really rate Skelly a lot, but, um, I thought Skelly was going to give a bit more of a hard time because Skelly is a bit of a handful because she's messy and she comes in and she's, she's a bit like that. But, you know, um, Jamie put on an epic performance and, you know, if it wasn't for two minutes, then Skelly would have been done in that first round, you know, and, and, um, she showed, you know, more tools to her box as well, that she has that power and, um, yeah, it was great. I think she's a great boxer, you know, honestly, I think Jamie's a great boxer and, um, I think, you know, it'd be great, I'd be great, love to fight her and, you know, test myself with her as well or whatever, but I know they have that fight in their contract that they got to do, but, um, I don't think Shannon will, will beat her again, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot of pieces to this jigsaw involving all you girls, but yeah. I suppose you're also doing your own thing because you're doing your own thing March 26th. And if your paths meet again, they do. If they don't, then it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, well, look, you know, the Bantamweight division is fucking hot. No matter what, whoever fights whoever, it's a hot division. Everyone's talking about it, you know, and I, I feel like me and Shannon started that. Now everyone wants to be in Bant Bantamweight. People want to come down, just heard Scott Nee saying, I want to come down and Ben. Of course she wants to come down and Ben, because that's where I am and that's where we are, you know what I mean? And people want to come up from Superfly to fight in Ben and Wait because it's the hot division, um, you know, and it's, it's the division with all the eyes on it. So um, no matter what fights get made, they're going to be good and they're going to be exciting. Um, and I truly believe that. And and it's good that people are talking about it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's good. But, you know, obviously I've got a job to do on the 26th and then I can talk about a little bit more of real potentials. But, yeah, they're all good for me. I'll fight anyone, anywhere. You know, I'm, I'm going with the hardest at the moment and if I can get through her, then I'll feel even more confident for the rest. Well, I'm sure we'll catch up, obviously, ahead of March 26th. It's um, probably, what, six weeks away, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah. Roughly? Just, yeah, just over six weeks. Yeah, yeah, it goes fast. Yeah, Lee should be rocking with Martinez and uh, Josh Warrington and uh, Maxi Hughes. Wolves, this is a really, really good card, yeah. actually, as well. Yeah, it is. It's actually yeah, a pretty epic card. And also being in the arena, it's going to be insane. It's going to be it's going to be a real atmosphere in there with all the Leeds fans. And I'm so excited for it. My last fight, obviously, I think there was only five days that the public got noticed. I was even really fighting on, on the card. Um, and I was, you know, early... Um, early on the on the card, and that was still a great atmosphere for me. So I can't wait to see what it's going to be like with you know now with all the notice for my fans as well, and um, you know being close further up closer to the main event on the card, and and really feeling that real Leeds love. So yeah, I'm excited for it. Eddie Hearn's put a lot of confidence in you, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think he believes in me. Um, I know he knows how much I work. I talk to him a lot and he knows how passionate I am and driven I am and, and he sees that. You know, I've made a lot of sacrifices. If you can't see how many fucking sacrifices and how serious I am about boxing with all the shit that I do and, you know, everything that I give up to be here chasing my dream, then, I mean, you need to open your fucking eyes, like, honestly, because um, it's it's I work hard. Like, you talk to anyone that's in the gym with me, you talk to the boys from the gym, any trainer that I've had, they know that I, I'm a fucking grafter and I work hard and, and it means everything to me. Put all the social media aside and everything like that. That's me grafting as well because I need to graft like that for my business because no one else is doing it, you know what I mean? So I've got to graft in everything, but there's nothing where – there's no leaving no stone, a stone unturned, you know what I mean? I work just as hard and I think people see that. Oh, people like Eddie can recognise that hard work and um, – yeah, and just knows that I'm going to be putting it in and giving it absolutely everything I can to be the best and be my best. So how can you not believe in me? You fucking swear a lot, don't you? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, Everly Bridges, appreciate your time as always. Um, it's not a fight week. So I know, like, fight weeks, to be honest with you, I've just realised that the difference in interviewing you, obviously, during a fight week, that's not your own. Because during a fight week, it's like... Not a nightmare to try and interview, but you're kind of like yeah. on a different level with that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. Fight week, like, obviously, I'm trying to preserve my preserve my energy a lot more as well, and like, I'll have to do my training and I'm dieting. I have to my food times, you know, because I'm very particular with my food and and um, you know, everyone obviously doing big days when you when you prepping that week with the presser and everything and trying to organise everything, like, it's like, fuck. And I'm, by the time I get to a point, I'm like, you know, I just don't fucking feel like it, mate. Like, you know, but, um, yeah, a bit, bit, bit more crazy. Still getting a lot of interviews in, but I'm a bit more crazy um, and a bit more chilled, so it's good. Okay. Um, well, 
so yeah, appreciate your time. We'll catch up with you, obviously, ahead of March 26th, live on The Zone, if you're not going to be in Leeds that week. And is there anything else? Not you, I'm saying, like, the people I'll watching. I'm going to be Weirdo. Do you, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to say before we finish? No. Thanks for being a mad cunt. <laughs> a, a what? Mad cunt. It's like a sick cunt. Like, you're a sick cunt. Like, you're a fucking mad cunt. Like, good cunt. That was four C-bombs in about... Not to what? No. I don't know. I'm trying to explain it, but okay. yeah, anyways. It's all good. Emily Bridges, thank you very much. We'll catch up with you soon. <laughs> thank you.